All right, this one's with Jack. Jack asked me what the difference is between revising in terms of textbooks and revising in terms of memorizing the lessons you learn from self-improvement books. That is basically what he asked me. So I have this here, a little thing I wrote out just to kind of... When I initially saw this question, I was like, okay, there's a difference. There's something I need to kind of say here before I talk about what I think out loud, right? So I wrote this down. For textbooks in school, the test is called an exam and you revise through during, through doing practice questions and flashcards, right? For self-improvement and success, the test is called life. That's the difference, okay? You revise through implementing new behavior patterns and observing results, okay? So to revise for an exam, you go through question papers and flashcards. Like that's the purpose of revising in school, right? But revising in life is what self-improvement books are for, right? So the exam is life. The test is life, right? And a little side note here, I note down here. In life, there's no practice. Every day is the real thing. So let me just read from here. Every day is the big exam. But if it's every day, then today's exam is practice for tomorrow's exam. If that makes sense, right? And that keeps on going and that's all we have. Right, today is practice for tomorrow. This month is practice for next month. This year is practice for next year. Right? Our childhood is practice for our adulthood. That's all it is, right? And that's all we have. You cannot revise a self-improvement book in the same way that you can revise a textbook. Okay? It, they are different things, right? And I note here as well a difference between memory and understanding. Right? Memory with an exam with a like an academic kind of thing, right? You can get away with using memory to kind of just memorize what they want to have as the answer and just like get away with doing that, right? You might be better with understanding, but you can get away with memory for academic exams, for school subjects, things like this, right? But in life, it's very critical that you learn the understanding of it. You need to understand why things happen the way they are. Like in self-improvement principles, yeah, you can memorize it, and you like you cut you have like some effectiveness, but the real, the greats, right, the greatest of all, the goats of life, right, the people who succeed the most, understand fully what they're doing. They don't just memorize something as a, as a thing they do, but they understand what it is that they do. They just, they do it at such a high level that it's like it's not memory for them. It's part of who they are, right. It's understanding. It's like built into them now. That's the level of kind of understanding that they have of it, right? So no, you cannot revise textbooks in the same way that you could, you should revise self improvement books. And I've tried that in the past, right? I've tried to revise, you know, revise like a, for an exam, self improvement books. I did this with the How to Win Friends and Influence People, right? I created on. So Anki is like the flashcard program that I recommend to everybody. I created a bunch of flashcards using that program, right? On that, how to win friends and influence people, right? On that book, right? And I like, I drew out diagrams and I asked myself questions and things like that. And it just wasn't really working. And I wondered why, because it works so well for me to learn like, you know, languages or science or physics and things like that. It worked really well. But for this, like reading books, it didn't work. So I was like, why doesn't that work? It's strange, right? Because I love reading books and I learn a lot from them. Surely I can get more out of them if I did it using flashcards and space repetition and, you know, active recall. But that wasn't the case. It was actually through real life examples. Like, so for example, in the book, it might say something like, you shouldn't criticize people. That's like one of the first rules, right? So in my life, I observed the people around me. I observed how they would criticize someone else and how it would end badly for them and how I criticized people and how it ended badly for me and how when I started to appreciate people, when I started to make them feel important. Like if you're familiar, if you're familiar with the book, these kind of terms will be familiar to you. I gave people a feeling of importance. I complimented people. I tried to not make them feel like they were being criticized or I wasn't trying to make them go on the back foot or being offensive to them. 
and I just observed that principle in my life, changed my own behavior patterns and just used that as like a new lens to see the world through. Right? So I just, I, I thought about it deeply. Right? I, I wrote about it wherever I thought. I didn't make flashcards and things like that. I just kind of had it as a new way of seeing the world. Okay, now that I know this, how does the world look to me? Right? And that process happens kind of automatically. It kind of happens through kind of osmosis. Right? And osmosis means basically the stuff kind of diffuses into your brain. Like if if something sticks, then that's all it takes. If something just sticks in your brain, it's like, oh, that's a cool idea. Then you'll think about it for a long time. And if you think about it for a long time, you will observe it in the world in general. And that's what it is to read a book and learn lessons from it. To learn that and observe it in the world. Right? To Because like if a book is written well, it is written in such a way that it does stick in your brain. It will tell you stories, it will tell you anecdotes, it will tell you how it applies in real life. And so you will be able to observe it in real life. Right? The book's done most of the work for you. It's you that has to kind of pick which lesson is relevant for you to learn. And then focusing on that happens automatically. If you read like a hundred bits of advice, there'll be one bit of advice that sticks out above the rest. Right? And that doesn't mean the other bits of advice are irrelevant to you. It's just that that one bit of advice is what means something to you. And that's not a bad thing. That's what you're focusing on now. And that's your chapter of your life right now is learning this lesson. Right? And so you learn that through having it in your head, just observing it in real life, changing your own behavior patterns. And life is the way to learn it. You learn the book through life. Right? I don't know if I've hammered it home hard enough yet, but I've, I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit here. That's what it is. Right? There are no... There are no, like, past paper questions, right? The book is the records of people's lives and the lessons that they've learned. So that's the closest thing we have to, like, past paper questions, right? It's like a past paper answer booklet, really. It's not a question paper. It's a past paper, like, guide to life. It's a past paper kind of, how do I say this? Like hack, like a hack compilation, life hack compilation, whatever you want to call it, right? It's a compilation of lessons that people have learned and accumulated over time and structured in such a way and built it over years of time to like make it the best thing that they have to to give to the hu- to, to human race, right? And so that's what it is. That's what it is. That's how you can learn best from self improvement books, right? They are very much different from textbooks. Yes. And that's what I've learned over life, over the course of my life, right? I have, I've actually tried. So I thought it was funny you kind of mentioned this because I have actually tried to revise a book just like a academic subject, like a textbook. And it didn't work. And I was like, what, why doesn't that work? It's because of this distinction we can make between, you know, academics or academia and self-improvement. Right. And the difference is, you know, an exam, like a like a sit down pen and paper exam or life. Right. Those are two different categories of things. Right. Like real life, tangible stuff you do in every day. Right. So I think that's all I have to say. I don't want to drag this out too long, but I hope that helps, Jack. And yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, take care. Peace. Not too bad.